there is another possible mockery of the Constitution that people fear uh, in the in the possible rulings by Judge Aileen Mercedes uh, Cannon in this case, since she has already shown such contempt for the, this investigation merely being underway when it first uh, came into her courtroom. That's right. And when I read the tweet by my friend, Judge Ludig, I thought, such a shame that this case, at least as it now stands, is not going to be tried before a normal judge who would pay attention to the fact that on these facts, there really does appear to be no defense. She would not tolerate, if she were a normal judge, many of the bizarre arguments that former President Trump is making. The argument somehow that the Presidential Records Act, which has no bearing on these charges, somehow gave him the right to keep national security information and withhold it from the government and lie to the government about having it. But we don't have a normal judge. That's really the problem. Like Bradley Moss, I would love to give her the benefit of the doubt. But those of us who did that when she interfered without any legal basis in this very case, to the extent that the unanimous 11th Circuit, a very conservative court, not only reversed her twice, but castigated her for injecting herself in violation of the separation of powers in a way that interfered with the executive branch. Uh, given all of that, I'm desperately worried. In fact, one of the things she said that the Court of Appeals had very little patience for was because he was president of the United States, he deserves not only a presumption of innocence, but he deserves special deference and a different set of legal standards. So much for the idea that no one is above the law. We're not helpless in this situation. In 1980, the United States Supreme Court confronted a case in which the trial judge and the defendant and the prosecutor all wanted to exclude the press and the public. And it said, you can't do that. Whatever the rules of the individual courtroom are, there is a general right under the First and Ninth Amendments to the Constitution for the press and the public to see justice done. And that right belongs especially to the victims. Warren Berger, no liberal, wrote in that case, it belongs to the victims. And who are the victims of the stockpiling of essentially treasonous possibility on the part of the president? The victims are all of us, 300 million Americans. Very few of us can fit into that courtroom. And allowing the press to sit there and then simply report after the fact is no substitute for at least a live audio feed if this judge is not removed. But in Richmond newspapers against Virginia, the case I'm referring to, the Supreme Court said that you have to have a neutral adjudicator. You have to have public access, even if the government doesn't want it. So we don't depend on the Department of Justice here to ask, why doesn't MSNBC, why don't the networks affirmatively ask that this be covered, you know, from mm -hmm. beginning to end yeah. so that we can see justice done. If she is not removed, if she is not recused at a very minimum, in order to have public confidence that in this most important of all cases, the bias of a judge who's already indicated that bias and who was appointed by this president doesn't prevent justice from being done. Yeah, uh, news organizations have teamed up in the past uh, specifically to try right. to do this uh, legally. Uh, the, the point about recusal uh, is, not, it, it is not an admission that, the, that you are biased. It is simply, uh, the, the rule about it simply says you should recuse, the judge should recuse if her impartiality might reasonably be questioned. 
might reasonably be questioned. That's all it is. That's the standard for this judge to recuse. And it goes beyond what you said, Lawrence. It's not just should. It says must. 28 U.S. Code Section 455 says that a federal judge must recuse him or herself in any case where that judge's impartiality might reasonably be questioned. No person could look at the situation and fail at least to say that that standard is met. And if she doesn't recuse herself, then the 11th Circuit, through a writ of mandamus, can direct her to do so. That's very rare. But this is indeed a very rare case. You know, the, the remarkable thing is that uh, the, Donald Trump and his lawyers argued that Judge Mershon, who is set to conduct the trial brought pursuant to the Alvin Bragg indictment in Manhattan, that he is someone who must recuse himself. Why? Because a couple of years ago, he contributed $35 to some Democratic organizations. Therefore, his impartiality might reasonably be questioned. In this case, we have something infinitely more problematic than that. And in that case, the ethics group to which the matter was referred has said Judge Merchan does not need to recuse himself. This is very different. Not only was she appointed by President Trump at the time, but she has indicated in her rulings that she does have utter contempt for this prosecution, that she thinks as a former president, he's on a special pedestal, that she believes that the various defenses that he might make, the ones that your panel earlier quite rightly said are absolutely empty as a legal matter, she is very likely to give them not just the time of day, but an enormous amount of time to drag this out so that the scenario in which we have a meaningful verdict before the presidential election is very unrealistic. So we, we have to do all we can to get a judge who not only is impartial, but whose impartiality cannot reasonably be questioned. Failing that, we have to make this as transparent a proceeding as possible, so that, among other things, that will deter Judge Cannon from doing things that the whole nation will see are lawless and biased. And if she's not deterred, at least the country will see why it is that these empty defenses are proving sufficient for the former president to commit really severe acts of treachery.